I'm James Wynn Sheard. Welcome to Come Out number two. And this is part two of my sci fi horror comparison. So I was on Resident Evil. I was talking about the video game. I was talking about the movies and all that stuff. And we're going to leave it right where I left it on the other video. So I also talked about the difference between Asian horror movies and American horror movies. Both of them have that grateful, scary element that just makes you want to almost pee on yourself. Or make the girl next to you jump in your lap. Those are the movies you like. Because, especially if you're single, those strange girls jumping on your lap. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Has it never happened to me? I'm not that blessed. I've had a woman rub her head, her ass against my head when I was a kid once or twice. When um, I went to go see Ninja Turtles. It was a nice ass. It was a beautiful white woman. But anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, so, um, when you get into these scary movies... The only thing with the Asian movies that's an issue for me is that I don't speak the language of the origin country in which it came from. And some of these movies are even actually banned in some of the Asian countries, except for the countries in which they are made. So, you know, um, China has a, a lot of sensory issues on what they are allowed to um, show their public. And if you sneak movies in, you could probably get arrested or executed again. But I'm not going to take that that far. I don't think you're going to get executed for a movie, but I'm not trying to push that factor. But you, know, you never know. And the thing is, when you're watching these scary movies, they have so many different elements that will shock the hell out of you, that will surprise you or whatever. And you need to know these things because you never know yourself when you could be in a scary movie, a living, live-action scary movie. I don't really like the scary movies that are based on fact. All right? For those who don't know, for the American culture, uh, the movie The Exorcist starring Linda Blair was actually factually based on a true story of a kid in the 60s or the 50s in Washington, D.C. The house is real. We've been past it a few times in my lifetime. Prefer not to ever go back. Uh, Amityville Horror is still up in the air because some people are swearing that it's a hoax. Some people are swearing that it's not. And I'm that guy in the middle who doesn't really give a damn. I just want to know, is it real or is it not real? The Conjuring is based on a true story. Don't know so much about the second video. I do know that The Conjuring and the Annabelle thing is based on true events in certain people's lives. So you have to ask yourself, can this shit really happen? My answer to you is, hell yes. And the reason I say that is because you can't really believe in God and not believe in the supernatural since God is the supernatural. Now, in closing, you know, because somebody's probably going to interrupt this video. If, you, if you're um, in, in the factuals of scary stuff, you know, there's a lot of scary TV shows that are coming out. There are a lot of scary TV shows that's been out. I used to um, watch some scary movies and TV shows on AZN. I can't find it. I believe it was called Restless. And I've been looking for it and looking for it and looking for it. Every time I've Googled it or typed it up, it has not showed up. But when AZM was on, every Friday night when it existed, um, Restless came on. It was about this little woman. I believe they were in the Philippines. I'm not going to say exactly where the thing came from. Philippines or Indonesia. It was a good show. And um, the, little, the girl in the show, she's like in her 20s or whatever. Well, her character was in her 20s, but she had drowned and died when she was a kid, but they revived her. And that gave her the ability to see spirits. So she could see all these evil spirits and she could stop them, but she was the only one who could see them and the only one who could stop them. And it was a pretty good show, and I swear to God that it would work here. Because Ghost Whisperer worked for a long time. For those who are uh, fans of Ghost Whisperer. I never honestly watched it. I maybe watched it maybe once or twice. I actually preferred to watch Charmed. Sorry to Jennifer Love Hewitt. I just preferred Shannon Doherty and Holly Marie Combs and Alyssa Milano, which I think the show probably could have went a whole lot longer provided that everybody learned how to play nice on the set. And that's just speculation of rumors of them not getting along. And now, for us guys, you know, if you're into shit like Charmed, you know, you can't say you're not down with Supernatural. I have not missed an episode since season two. So, you know... I love Supernatural. Would love to be on the show. It's never going to happen, so I'm not going to get my hopes up. But anyway, you know, the thing is, you know, um, there are shows like that. And to be honest, we don't know if Hunters and them, 
they don't exist. So now we're on scary stuff. Let's talk about the number one scary TV show in the entire world, The Walking Dead. Yeah, that's just the shit, and you know you're watching it. Even if you're not watching it, you have heard of it, or you have seen at least one episode. I came in in season two, because I didn't know it was a graphic novel, which now I'm hunting down. Now, let's go to my favorite zombie show, which is not The Walking Dead, but I do like The Walking Dead. I personally like Z Nation. Don't like how they got rid of Patsy Powell. Don't like how they got rid of the, the first leader of the team. Don't like how they got rid of the token first black guy in the group because he died in the origin episode. So that kind of sucked. But I like where the show has gone and how it has come. <coughs> <coughs> and I like how um, they have replaced Patsy with another beautiful token Asian girl. All right. So the, the good news is that if I had to be in one of those worlds between The Walking Dead or Z Nation, I much rather live in Z Nation. All right? Mostly because there's a chance for a cure. Where in The Walking Dead, it's all about kill everybody who gets in your way. Now, it's a lot of killing in The Walking Dead. It's a lot of killing in Z Nation. Don't get me wrong. But Z Nation is just more of uh, my speed. Now, now, getting off of that, and getting off of TV shows, and going back to scary movies and stuff, I don't know if you guys have heard of this TV show that probably would be a movie somewhere down the line, uh, Stranger Things. It's on Netflix. I've only seen a couple of episodes, and it's awesome. Now, another TV movie show case thing, Ash vs. The Walking... I mean, The Walking Dead. Ash vs. The Evil Dead. That shit's awesome. I have to watch the newest episode tonight, and I have to watch last week's episode because I'm, I'm a couple of days behind. Binge-watching is a motherfucker. But, um, you know, when you're into these things... You, you kind of can't miss a beat. You know, um, <clears throat> one of the first science fiction movies I've ever seen in my life was Close Encounter of the Third Kind. Another one was War of the Worlds. The Tom Cruise remake, I still haven't seen all the way from beginning to end, so don't fuck it up for me because I'm going to find it and I'm going to watch it. But I have seen the War of the Worlds TV series, and I have seen the original movies, and then I've seen some movie about some aliens that came to some town and turned people into these little blue balls of light. I don't remember what the hell it was called, but it was a good movie. I think the lady from Robocop was in it, Nancy Allen. I'm not going to swear to it. I might be wrong, but it was a good movie, too. I just don't know the name of the damn thing. And if you guys know the name of it, post it there in the blocks. Um, I think it was, like, made in 82 or something, but it was, like, made to take place back in the 60s or 70s because the old dude was running around trying to save people because his girlfriend or his children or both got turned into balls of light and was collected and then um one of my favorites while we're on science fiction it might as well be considered a science fiction horror um <clears throat> silver bullet Corey Haim I think it's Corey Haim it's one of the two Corey's it was a Stephen King book or movie with Gary Busey in it and they had to make a silver bullet it was fucking awesome and you guys should probably check it out if you're into werewolf movies silver bullet best one ever if you're into vampire movies, Lost Boys. Best one ever. The first one. Don't know too much about the third one, and I can't really remember the second one, but the first one was always the best. And then, um, when you're getting into scary stuff, you know, I'm telling you, give Asian horror a try. You're going to love it. And if you're not going to love it, then you haven't picked the right Asian horror film. All right? And the same thing with Asian science fiction films. Granted, most of their science fiction films, when you have an Americanized Asian director, seem, seem to be more of American speed, where if you're watching Asian films that are just completely Asian and Asianized, um, they might not be your speed, but I'm okay with them. They're pretty good. Um, while we're on that, if you want to go science fiction with Asian stuff, watch the Japanese version of the Power Rangers. Awesome, because the Power Rangers can even die. And speaking of, there's a new Power Ranger movie coming out on March the month that my father died, so on the exact day he was uh, declared dead. Um, so I'm probably going to go see it. I don't know. I don't want to swear to it. I'm kind of having a little bit of money issues right now. So, you know, um, watch and subscribe. You know, I need some I need some, some guys to help me out here. You know, I need to get it together. I need more followers. Come on. I need more. But, you know, 
I want to know, how do you guys feel about scary movies? How do you guys feel about science fiction movies? Do you think that they're one and the same? Is there that thin coin? Is there that black and white line or that thin gray line that I think that they would walk? I'm asking because sometimes you ask questions because you don't know the answers yourself. And maybe someone else is seeing a different point of view might help you have some clarity to the things you see. Uh, I mentioned a movie earlier called Rawhead Rex. If you haven't seen that, I seen it in 1987, so it was probably made between 85 and 86. It is a very good movie. It is from another country. It is like from Ireland or Scotland, and it's based on one of their myths or legends or whatever. And you know, sci-fi had some um, science fiction horror films, I guess you could call them, where they had to go and kill this thing with the runestone, and then they had the wyvern. Well, I'm not saying it right, but anyway, you know, if you're watching these things, man. You're probably people just like me who are into this stuff and would love to make these movies. Well, I started off with Exist, so I'm going to end with Exist. Watching these movies, I have to say, we as people need to understand it. Sometimes things aren't always what they seem. Since I'm partially Native American, I need to put this out here because um, depending on what TV show you watch and what kind of genres of the stuff that you're into. Um, also, depending on tribal legend, technically, again, and I say technically, Sasquatch is not supposed to be the bad guy. But in all the science fiction movies, we tend to make him the bad guy. I honestly think that if we just leave him alone, he won't bother us. They've been around for thousands of years. It's the same thing that can be said about the Thunderbird, and we really could use Coyote the Trickster now. And, you know, probably sabotage a couple of things that people are trying to do to take away Native American land and stuff. And, you know, we um, need to understand culture before we decide what's good and what's bad. And granted, if you want to use Native American legends and not make them heroes, that's cool and dandy. It makes money, you know, so you can do that. But let's be honest, no one really knows if Bigfoot's a good guy or a bad guy. But by tribal law, he is a protector. Also, depending on what tribe you come from, because the same thing can be said for the Thunderbird and the Deer Woman and the Polar Bear Guy for the Unit or the Eskimo people, just depending. You know, I'm not saying it right, so if anybody out there who's Eskimoan or Inuit, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm only half Cherokee. Probably not even that much. It just depends on how you rate that scale since both of my grandparents my mother's mother and my father's mother were Native American, so they're both Cherokee. So like I said, you know, it's in there. <clears throat> I think that also, I've written a thousand and some change scripts. I'm ready to make movies. I'm a little crippled now, so I can't really be the kung fu guy I want to be in the movies, but I'm ready to make movies. So if there's any studios out here who want to make movies, I need a job. And I get to pick the cast. Especially since I can't be in the... But I want to make a cameo. Anyway, I'm James Williams Jr. This is Kung Fu number two. This is 13 and a half minutes of your life that you can't get back from the actor that you don't know of, have not been discovered, and maybe never will be. This is Kung Fu number two. I'm James Williams Jr. B, C, and U. <clears throat> and that was two fingers. Yeah. That way you, don't, you won't think that I'm giving you guys the finger. B, C, and you.